It is finally here, guys. The video I have been so desperate to get out, but just had so much other stuff on, I didn't get a chance to finish it sooner. In part one of our ITX motherboard showdown, which if you haven't seen yet, can be found here. I introduced the contestants and explained the ways in which they were going to be scored for each individual category. In my effort not to make this go on any longer, <coughs> nearly two months, we'll go straight to the results. First up, we have our Cinebench score, which you can see follows the expected pattern with the H110i scoring the lowest, with a gradual increase in points as you work your way up to the Maximus 8. All in all, pretty much what I expected to see here. Next, we did a test using the Heaven benchmark to see how the boards affected frame rates. Our GTX 980, by the way, was left at stock for this, and it was only the CPU that was overclocked. But this is where things got a little bit strange. The FPS across the board was almost identical, except that the H110i wasn't even overclocked. How the hell does that work? At stock, we had an average of 166 FPS on the lower end H110i, yet the Z170 had a lower score at stock of 153 only coming up to the same F FPS after we got an overclock of 4.7 GHz. I mean, really? A board that's over twice the price has been beaten by an underdog on FPS and just goes one step closer to proving my theory. I'd love to say that those were the only strange pieces of information I had on this, but unfortunately, they're not. After getting our i7 to the same 4.7 GHz overclock on the Maximus 8, I did try taking it higher, by the way, but just couldn't get it stable, we found it had absolutely no difference on the FPS we saw almost identical scores on the Maximus from stock and overclocked. Shocking news to us Asus lovers, but the truth nonetheless. Our final performance test took us into Asus RealBench, where we used the overall system score for our charts and also where things started to make sense again. The non-overclocked 110i came in at around 120,000 points, the other two beating this slightly at stock with around 135,000 respectively and a much higher score in the 150,000 range when overclocked. Overall, pretty much what I had expected. And with all that testing out of the way, it's finally time to move on to our scoring for each of the boards. The H110i lacks the most features, but it does still have four full SATA 6 ports and one of each standard display connector, which I guess is something. So we'll give it two stars. The Z170i is the middle of the range board, gives support for DDR4, sports 2x2 Moomimo, USB 3.1 Type-A and Asus's Supreme FX Audio and should you be so inclined, it has an M.2 socket on the rear of the board. I think she's worthy of 4 stars. The Maximus comes with all the same bells and whistles with the exception of a U2 connector, higher grade MOSFETs and a Type-C connector which I think for a board this size warrants 4.5 stars. Next we move on to speed. I was pretty surprised in my initial testing as I would have expected more of an increase on the FPS score for the Maximus, which I didn't get at all really. I did however get an expected increase in CPU speed, but not as much as I would have liked. This can of course be narrowed down to the CPU as well, so I am taking that into consideration. But I'm going to give the Maximus 8 3.5 stars. The Z170 did actually perform as expected, giving a decent score at the start, but actually ramping up on the FPS and baseline scores after the same overclock of 4.7 GHz achieved on the Maximus and was actually on par with it after the overclock. Four and a half stars for this puppy. The H110 was even more of a surprise while having an expected lower score on the CPU side in Cinebench and Realbench, for gaming purposes we actually got a higher FPS at stock than we did on the Z170. Although this test wasn't intended to point at gamers related speed, I have to take it into consideration seeing as the other two boards are actually targeted at the gamer audience, yet still fell short of this H110 chipset board in FPS. And because of that, I'm going to give it four stars. Our final score is based on the board's price to performance ratio, and this time I'll start at the lower end of the chain. The fact of the matter is, if it's real heavy CPU related tasks that you're going to be doing, you won't be looking at any of these boards anyway. So I'm basing my final price to performance based on their ability to churn out FPS as a primary and the CPU scores as a secondary. The H110i is our cheapest board on test at around £59 on SCAN's website. In game related tasks it had an almost identical score to the other two boards without needing overclocking. It still has support for SATA 6 gigabit speeds and the fact it doesn't have an M.2 connector isn't a major issue considering you probably won't notice any difference for standard gaming anyway. After my testing, I can't seem to fault this board. Seeing what it's capable of up against the other two, I give this board an astounding 4 stars. The Z170 comes in at around £129 on SCAN's website and has many more features, but at stock it seemed less performance. 
Sure, I managed to ramp it up a bit after a healthy overclock, but when compared to a stock H110, beating it outright for SPS and being over twice the price, I'm going to issue this guy with three stars. The big daddy in this competition was always going to be the Maximus, and the fact I knew it was going to be in my rig after, which if you haven't seen the video for can be found here, I had high expectations. Unfortunately, this was not to be though. At a price over triple the cost of the H110, even with a cranked up i7, I had no noticeable difference on the FPS side. Yes, I did see an increase in the CPU performance with the other two tests, which will certainly help, but I just can't see that as a justifiable price compared to what I can be had at a much, much lower price point. And because of that, I'm gonna to have to give it two and a half stars. With all that said, we crown the champion of the ring, the Z170i. As most of you would have expected, being the middle of the road contender, it has a central price point with features that just won't be found on a H110 chipset. And I personally will be happy to recommend it. Although the clear winner in my eyes in terms of price is definitely the H110i. At a fraction of the cost, if the extra bells and whistles don't matter to you and you just want solid performance in game without needing or wanting to overclock, just buy the cheaper option. So I started out this comparison video with it in mind that my favorite board manufacturer was just gonna wipe the floor with the higher end board and it wasn't gonna be a surprise to anyone. Asus will still remain as my favorite board manufacturer. The quality of their boards is second to none. I've never had any issues with them and always found just generally a much cleaner experience when dealing with things like BIOS updates, which were at one point quite a scary thing to do. Although that being said, all motherboard manufacturers are catching up with one another with almost all of them providing some easy way to do things such as a BIOS update or make big changes to something within the BIOS. So I do plan on doing some more comparison videos with other board manufacturers. Let me know in the comments if there is one particular that you'd like to see. I would like to thank Asus for lending us the Z170 board. I had previously purchased the other two, but after a recent conversation at the Insomnia Gaming Festival, they were kind enough to lend us one for this comparison. If you liked the video guys, please like and subscri subscribe. If you thought it sucked, I'm sure you know what to do. Any suggestions, leave them below and keep an eye out for our next video, which I believe is gonna be how to set up OpenVPN on PFSense. Cheers guys.